Hi everyone, welcome to East Coast Sailing. I'm Rob and you might have heard these bottles clinking. That's because we're gonna release three separate messages in three different bottles. So the lucky finders will also find 10 pounds, so lunch is on us. So we're launching these on the 12th of February. It's actually roasting today. So hopefully these bottles find their way quite quickly because we've read some stories that take up to 101 years to find the message in the bottle. We filled up the kitchen sink to see how our bottles would float. We each wrote our personalised messages with our names at the top so we knew who launched what bottle. We rolled the letters and money tightly together and tied it with string so it'd slide inside the bottle and if it was found it would slide out quite easily. The only thing left to do was to seal the message in the bottle with the cork. Now I did go belts and braces, I pushed the cork in really far, used super glue on top as well as candle wax to finish it off. To the finders, good luck getting them open, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There was hardly any wind that day, so we had to motor all the way out. Now, for any of you eco warriors who are gonna jump in the comments section saying we've thrown rubbish into the sea, rest assured, we spent four hours as a family along the marshes picking up rubbish. We filled a giant bag full, which I'll go through later on in the video. We've removed much more rubbish from the sea than potentially we've put into it. The bottles are made of glass and it also contains money, so that's treasure effectively. It's a barbecue. turned the corner from Woodrolf Creek into the Tollsbury Fleet Channel. We made our way over to the edge of the River Blackwater where it meets the North Sea. Oh wow! Hugo, can you steer left? It's the other way, Bubba. This way, look. Oh yeah. <laughs> You can tell Fran took that one personally, not getting a wave back from the fishermen. The bottles are being launched from the southeast coast of England in between Bradwell and Mersey. All three bottles will be thrown in a line quarter of a mile apart at high tide. As the tide turned, it would pull the bottles out into open sea with a gentle westerly wind helping. I was first up to launch my bottle. So Franz uh, named our bottle Buddy, haven't you? Do you want to do the impression? Hi <laughs> Buddy, I hope you find your dad. <laughs> now we just chucked this in the water and we've lost this about three times already. I mean, actually no, you can see, yeah. We were worried about someone just following our boat and picking up all these bottles and then being 30 quid up, but we've been struggling to find it within about 15 meters. So um, I dread to think if you fall overboard with us, we probably wouldn't find you very quickly. Hugo couldn't contain his excitement and it's at this point he became impatient and wanted to throw his bottle in so he was up next. Fran threw the final bottle in. We kept our eye on the jet skis to make sure they didn't stop and pick up our treasure. We headed back to Tollsbury under engine against the tide on the smoothest sea. North Sea just in front, with Bradwell Power Station, to 
towards Malden, Tolsbury and Salcombe. We tied on to a boy to take in the breathtaking scenery. We could only wonder the epic journey the bottles were about to undertake. We untied ourselves from the boy and started to head home. We went past the boat called Spellbound and seemingly things started to go wrong after this. I could hear the audible sound of a drip. I rushed into the cabin and checked under the floorboards which confirmed my worst fear. There was water coming in due to a leaking water pump. I turned the bilge pump on and headed home quickly for Spellbound had placed a curse upon Avania. Both bilge pumps were working hard to keep the water to a safe level. Ivania limped into her berth unscathed. I was really lucky with the timing to spot this issue because the boat was actually getting lifted out three days later. Now this repair can be done on the mooring but it's easier done when it's out of the water. Now I did read somewhere the only way to break a curse is by eating sausages and beer. We sat round the fire under the stars, full of hope and wondering of the journey and all the encounters they would have along the way. The close encounters with the marine traffic and ships, the marine life they would pass, the stormy seas and close encounters with the rocky coastline. How long the bottles would be on the sea before they finally come to rest on the beach where they would be found. Thanks for watching East Coast Sailing and if you've enjoyed today's episode hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to follow the story of the bottles.